Welcome back. You're watching Morning Live. Thank you for staying with us. It contains large-scale oil paintings of defendants, photographs of justice practitioners, and audio installations of witnesses and victims of genocide and war crimes. That's international artist Bradley McCullum's a socially engaged public art project titled Weights and Measures, opening at the Constitutional Hill in Bramfontein today. The exhibition challenges us to think critically about the legacy of international tribunals, the issues facing the International Criminal Court, and the voices of victims in seeking justice. To tell us more about weights and, weight and measures, we are joined by the man behind this body of work, Bradley McCullum, and curator of the exhibition, Natasha Becker. Guys, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Bradley, welcome to South Africa. Um, let's, let's talk about why you wanted to tell this very emotive uh, and I think maybe highly topical uh, story. Well, it really began ten, um, when I was attending the Assembly of State Parties uh, almost four years ago. It was their 10th anniversary at that time. And there was only one case that had reached a point of conviction, and that was Thomas Labunga. And I made the painting of Thomas Labunga that uh, you'll see in the exhibition here. Mm. And it haunted my studio, and it just made me realize that I, uh, there was a, an important story to be told, and it could be told through portraits. Mm. So I've been working on this body of work now for over three and a half years, and this is really the first time that all of the portraits are coming together to be seen, over 20 paintings Whoa. and 60 photographs of justice practitioners and the oral history. So it's, I couldn't think of a better place to launch the exhibition than Constitution Hill. The, we're, we're working with the prison number four, mm. former prison that held Nelson Mandela mm. and Mahatma Gandhi, and the, the voices and the stories and the, the lives that uh, pass through that place, you can feel it in, in the architecture. And in a way, the exhibition becomes a counterpoint to the ghosts that are already there. Mm. Um, I, I want to come to you, Natasha, but I, I want to just ask one more question for Bradley. The importance of, and I, and I know it's, I don't know how to phrase this, but the fact that you're coming to South Africa mm. at such a time right. when we are really grappling with issues, yeah. where we are really trying to understand our, 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 our identity, our space, even mm. our history, yeah. it is, for me, it says so much. Why South Africa? Why Constitutional mm. Hill? Well, we, we began planning the exhibition more than a year ago, long before uh, the letter of withdrawal was put forward and the High Court was able to rule on that. Mm. And so sometimes things just synchronize. And in many ways, I'm, I feel it's uh, the, the inspiration for starting here initially was the strength of your constitution. Mm. And the very most... The fact, beautifully the fact crafted. That it's, it's beautifully crafted and the most progressive, I think, constitution that exists in the world. But it's a young constitution, and it's one that's being tested. Mind you, our constitution's being tested right now in ways we would never have By imagined. POTUS. <laughs> yeah. Natasha, so. let me bring in this conversation. I, I, I think that for, for, for South African who hasn't been to Constitutional Hill, the gravitas of that, of that as a venue, as a backdrop to such an, uh, an important discussion. As the curator, uh, as, as Brad was saying, it took over three years, a year to develop this relationship. But today is the launch. Today is the launch and Constitution Hill is a museum, uh, was a former fort and a former prison. Mm. It's the home of our Constitutional Court, uh, which is in a beautiful new building. And the Constitutional Court also has an art collection that Albi Sach started and, you know, represents art across the sort of mm. social and political spectrum. The section that we are in is the men's number four prison, formerly the uh, number four prison, and it was a particularly brutal place for um, prisoners because they were racially divided as well and treated, mm. you know, accordingly. Um, and we, with the support of the Norwegian embassy, were able to bring the exhibition to that part of the site um, where there wasn't electricity before, so there was no lighting, um, and you know, so we were able mm. to. Um, really create an infrastructure for the exhibition with their support and with the support of Constitution Hill staff who were working with us on this on this project. So the site, um, you know, is this historical setting, but uh, we're having a contemporary conversation yeah. about justice today. About to ask that question, yeah. And international justice is a very complicated issue. 
And I think for, 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 for us, for countries where we take this exhibition, the question, the main issue is always what is our relationship to international justice? Mm. We, we, we are, you know, deeply engaged in local issues, in the problems we face. Are we able to face. answer that question now? I think we I think we we've we've hosted a number of dialogues too. So we've had three um, civic dialogues where we invite panelists like Richard Goldstone, Navi mm. Pele, you know, South Africans who've been key to the formation of the International mm. Court actually because South Africa and Canada for instance played a really critical mm. role in starting um, you know, the legislature, etc., to establish this court. Um, and Nelson Mandela it's part of his legacy too, international justice. You know, he really promoted it and he sent Richard Goldstone to be the chief prosecutor on the Yugoslavia tribunal, yeah. you know. So the exhibition looks at previous and tribunals as well as the, the court cases. And I think that what we've seen is that there are different aspects to this. There's a the human rights approach, there's, there's mm. you know, new ways in which certain crimes have been introduced in war, such as mm. rape yeah. and sexual violence. And then there's also constitutional issues. So through the dialogues, we've tried to unpack some For of sure. these. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've run out of time, but I've got to, I'm going to steal some time quickly. Okay. Bradley, final question to you. Sure. Just talk to me about weight and measures. Why name it that? Well, for me, it's really about uh, trying to create a metaphor for the balance of mm. justice and that this isn't about guilt or innocence, but it really is about the judicial structures and how to um, make visible and metaphoric and poetic the fact that we're trying to bring uh, the principles of due process to some of the most heinous crimes that have been committed. And it's running until when? It will be up through the month of April. So, wow, please so there's more than enough time to go. Yes. And we'll have yep. entertainment and food and T -t -t today. free, free it's drinks open to everybody. today. Today open to it's everybody. open, free, and okay. it'll be a great At what time party. does it start? At 11 a.m. At 11 a.m. That's brilliant. Okay, yes. cool. Natasha Baxter, uh, Bax uh, Becker, and uh, international artist Bradley McCullum. Uh, she is the curator. He's the artist. It's called Weights and Measures. <coughs> it's opening at the Constitutional Hill in Bramfontein today at 11 o'clock. It's very, very important. Let's support it. Let's go out, family, friends. Let's go and check this out. You take an hour back then.